Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone, to my fellow professional technologists. For those who are fasting, I hope that you guys are feeling good today, um, despite the hunger and thirst that we are experiencing during this blessed month of Ramadan. My name is Azian. I am the Executive Director of Kenalang Integrity Services and also your moderator. Prior to our invited speaker addressing the topic on drones, I would like to share with you a bit about our host today, PCSS Consultancy, and the collaboration partner, Kenalang Integrity Services. Next bell, please. Sorry, a bell? Oh yeah, um, I'm just waiting for Bell to uh, share the slides. Next slides, Bell. Uh, Azian, I think I'm like experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, ah, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Um, sorry, everyone. Um, okay. We just uh, okay. I can see your slides now. Um, as I mentioned just now, I would like to share with you a bit about our host, PCSS Consultancy, and also the uh, collaboration partner Kenyalang. PCSS Consultancy is a project management consultancy that provides training and also services to improve the process of delivering and operating the built environment for the clients across industries. There, besides the services on consultation, they are also a partner of Oracle, Bentley, and also PMI Institute. Their goal is to ensure that the clients will apply on their project management implementation within the business organizations and de delivery of trainings. Next, Bell. Um, okay, guys, sorry for the technical issues. I think Bell is having some um, technical issues. So, okay, I'll just jump into uh, introduction of Kenyalang as a collaboration partner. Let me just share the slides, yeah? Okay, um, can you see my slides, guys? Okay, um, as a leading Sorokin provider in utilities and energy industry, Kenyalang was founded in 2016. We offer environmental and digital technologies to our clients. We have a team of experts who are passionate about what they do and are dedicated to provide the best possible solutions to the clients. Our commitment to excellence and safety is reflected in our partnerships with prominent organizations such as Petronas Vendor Development Program and the Malaysia Industrial Hygiene Association. Penyalang take great pride in being a Sorokin company and in contributing to the growth and development of our local Sarawak economy. Our vision is to provide a high quality products and services that exceeds our customers' expectations. It's a reflection of our commitment to our clients, employees, and also the community. Our mission is to be the go-to company for environmental and digital technologies in utilities and energy industries. Is a testament to our determination to become the best in the industry. 
we believe that by working together with our technology partners, excuse me, and constantly striving for excellence, we can achieve our goals and become a trusted partner to our clients. We understand that controlling and recovering from mercury contamination can be a complex and challenging processes. That's where we come in. Let me just put on my laser point first here. Our services are specifically designed to meet the control and recovery measures identified by our clients. We offer a range of services to address mercury contamination, including decontamination of personal working in contaminated areas, equipment used on site, and tools used in plant areas. Our team of experts has extensive experience in dealing with mercury contaminations and ensure that all contamination is effectively removed. We follow the latest industry standards to ensure that our decon services are safe, effective, and efficient. In addition to our decon services, Kenyalang also offer industrial hygiene consultation and training to ensure the safety and health of our client in the workplace. These services are crucial for identifying potential hazards, assessing risks, and developing effective control measures to minimize the risk of their staff. In Kenyalang, we collaborate with technology partners to ensure that our clients achieve greater efficiency and growth through data and digital innovation. We believe that technology can be a powerful tool for driving business growth and improving operation efficiency. Our key area of digital and data innovation is providing digitalization advisory, big data and analytic solutions, as well as drone inspections and survey. Sky Features Malaysia, Kenyalang Drone Technology Partner will be sharing their insights in our webinar session today. Sky Features specialize in providing end-to-end -end solutions for inspection, data collections, and analysis using unmanned aerial systems, UAS. They have been operating in Sarawak since 2021. With offices in London, Aberdeen, Houston, and Kuala Lumpur, and strong partnerships with companies like Keppel and Portec in Singapore, they are truly a global organization. They have an impressive list of over 50 energy clients across 28 different countries, and they are known for their expertise in high-risk environment environments like the energy sectors. One of the things that sets them apart is their extensive experience. They have over 12,000 hours of UAS experience, which is incredibly impressive. They are even qualified by the UK Civil Aviation Authority to train and license remote pilots, both for their own team and for third parties. Their commitment to innovation is clear as well. They have an in-house technology team and a 350-acre training and R&D facilities. Sky Features Malaysia is a part of SM Group, and they operates under a franchise agreement with Sky Features UK. This means that all of their crews has to undergo the same set of trainings, operating using the same set of operation manuals, and at every quarter would share their operation and safety experience across one another. They also have localized crew among Sarawakians who have undergone trainings and maintained their flight, sorry, flight certifications with their franchiser. This ensures that their team is highly qualified and up to date with the latest techniques and technologies in UAS operations. Furthermore, Sky Features is qualified by not just the UK civil aviation authorities, but also the civil aviation authorities of Singapore. Thailand and Malaysia, as well as the Department of Civil Aviation in Indonesia, Vietnam and Myanmar. This shows their commitment to complying with regulations and ensuring the highest standards of safety and professionalism 
in the operations across different regions. Whether you are looking to embark on digital transformation or need to conduct drone inspections and surveys, we have the expertise and technologies to help you achieve your goals. Besides that, Kenalang also provides comprehensive monitoring solutions for a variety of hazardous cases and substances. Our team can help you develop a customized monitoring program to ensure the safety and compliance of your workplace. Our scheduled waste management services covers everything from handling and lifting to transportation and collection. Our team handles all aspects of water dispo waste water disposal from collections to fine, final disposal. Kenalang is also a one-stop center providing integrated solutions for upstream and downstream clients in energy and utilities industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found my sharing on Kenyalang is informative. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me or follow our LinkedIn. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker for today, a professional technologist in the field of aerospace and aviation. He has over 22 years of aerospace experiences comprising of aircraft design, maintenance, flight operation, project management and manufacturing of aerostructure, composites and metallic parts, as well as UAV design, maintenance and operation. Mr. Hazi holds a master's degree in engineering management. He has also gained his UAV flight operation experience on Eagle ARV, USD Aldra, Aerovision Fulma, Institute Scan Eagle, Zala SR08, EMT Aladdin and Aztec Falcon 8. His role and professionalism has been respected widely and has gained the necessary approval and entrusted delegated authority from local and international aerospace organization. His role was vital as an Airbus and Boeing approved project manager and signatory holder for Finet Element Analysis Report. He also plays a leading role in obtaining the type certification for the first UAV in Malaysia and also approved maintenance organization from Directorate General of Technical Airworthiness Malaysia. Currently, he is one of the industrial advisor at Center of Excellence for Unmanned Aerial System, University of Malaysia Police. He also holds a valid remote pilot license from CAA UK. CAA Singapore and CAA Malaysia. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Mr. Hasli to talk about drone-based gas detection. What is the way forward, sniffer or optical gas imagery? The floor is yours, Mr. Hasli. All right, thank you. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator, for the warm welcome. Thank you very much all for joining this webinar. Thank you very much as well to all my fellow technologists and certified technicians who attend this webinar. Thanks for your support, guys. Salam Ramadan to all my Muslim brothers and sisters. We are counting days now. Next Thursday evening will be a guessing game to know when will be the Hari Raya is. My name is Hazli from Sky Futures Malaysia and today I'm going to present on one of the emerging technology of drones. What are the capabilities to improve efficiency and enhance safety of our daily operation? The presentation will took approximately half an hour or maybe less you can stay on together. On my presentation today, what is the way forward sniffer or OGI? This is a topic that we will be covering today. 
some short introduction to the conventional gas leak detection that most of you might have been familiar with. Then we will explore the drone-based gas leak detection, what are the technologies available, and what are the plus point and limitation. We will also share with you our actual experience performing the drone-based gas leak detection within our region. And hopefully all of you can bear with me towards the end of the session. Now, as you all know better, the criticality of gas leak detection at an oil and gas plant. These facilities handle hazardous and flammable gases on a daily basis. Accidental gas release result in fires, explosion, and toxic gas exposure, which catastrophic for personnel and the environment. A study conducted in 2006 on storage tank accident between 1960 to year 2003 within America, Asia, and Europe shows that 80% was caused by this. Some of the common gas encountered include methane, hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, and volatile organic compound. These gases can be colorless, odorless, and highly flammable, making them difficult to detect without specialized equipment. In addition to protecting personnel, gas detection is also important for environmental protection. Plants or refinery are often located near populated areas or natural habitats, and a gas release can have significant impact on air and water quality. Detecting and responding quickly to gas release can help minimize the impact on the environment. Emission also negatively impact a facility's carbon footprint. Methane is approximately four times worse compared to CO2. That's why major oil and gas player has embarked on to the OGMP 2.0. Conventionally, these are typical equipment used to detect gas leak. Portable handheld used to check for gas leak in specific area of the plant, such as around valve or pipelines, useful for routine maintenance or inspection. Ultrasonic devices detect gas leaks by listening for the sound of escaping gas, commonly used for detecting leaks in high pressure system or hard to reach area. The fixed detector or sniffing device installed at a specific area of the plant and are designed to detect the presence of gas around the local area. Gas leak also can sometimes be detected visually on equipment or pipeline. This can include looking for sign of corrosion or damage or for unusual discoloration or distortion. Optical gas imaging cameras detect gas leaks by identifying changes in the infrared spectrum caused by the gas can be used to scan large area quickly and can provide real time images of leaking gas. The choice of method depends on various factors, type of gas being detected, the size and layout of the plant, and the required level of sensitivity. It is important to have a comprehensive gas detection plan to ensure the safety of personnel and equipment. Drones has become increasingly popular as a way to monitor and detect hazardous gases in the environment. Drones can be useful tool in certain scenario. So how can drones be an effective solution for gas leak detection? Drones can cover large area quickly and efficiently, providing a bird eye view of the facility. Efficient for inspecting large oil and gas facilities, long stretch of pipelines or offshore rigs where manual inspection will be time consuming and expensive. By using drone, inspector can avoid putting themselves in harm way particularly important in hazardous environment where the, there is a risk of explosion or other accidents. Cost effective compared to conventional inspection method, such as manual inspection or the use of manned aircraft. Drone can provide high resolution images and data that can be analyzed in detail to identify and locate gas leak with greater accuracy. This helps to identify potential problem early, allowing for faster and more effective response. 
Drone can specialize camera such as infrared or optical gas imaging camera that can detect leaks by identifying changes in the infrared spectrum caused by the gas. The detection may be difficult to identify by other means. However, it is important to note that drones are not always the best solution for gas leak detection. Factors such as weather condition, visibility, and the need for detailed inspection in confined spaces can affect the effectiveness of the drones. Additionally, drones, since it is airborne, are not a replacement for a conventional gas detection equipment, which is still necessary to detect gas leak at ground level. Two main methods of gas detection that are used with drones sniffer and optical gas imaging or OGI. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages. Important to consider both when deciding which method is the way forward. In this presentation, we will discuss the pros and cons of both sniffer and OGI drone based gas detection and explain why OGI is the way forward. Sniffer drone base work by using a drone or UAV equipped with one or more gas sensor to fly over an area of interest and detect the presence of target gases in the atmosphere. The gas sensor can be of different types, including infrared, electrochemical or photoionization detector, depending on the specific gas being targeted. As the drone flies over the area, the gas sensor sample the air and measure the concentration of the target gases. Data then transmitted back to the operator in real time could analyze and identify any potential gas leak or other hazards. So in principle, it's just using the conventional gas detector equipment mounted on a drone and get it airborne to scan for emission. So what are the advantages? Sniffer drone can be used to survey hazardous area or location that are difficult to access, reducing the need for workers to enter potential dangerous environment. Cost effective than conventional method, which may require specialized equipment, PPE and competent personnel. Allow for faster, more efficient monitoring with quantitative information reducing the time required for manual inspection. Gas sensor on drones can provide real-time accurate data on gas concentration level, enabling workers to, to quickly identify and respond to potential hazard. Reduce the environmental impact of gas leak by enabling early detection and response to prevent the release of harmful gases into the atmosphere. Overall, sniffer drone-based gas detection is a valuable tool for improving safety, efficiency, and environmental stewardship in industrial gas leak detection and monitoring. Still, there are several limitations to this technology, despite all the advantages given. Gas sensor can be affected by environmental factors such as wind, temperature, and humidity, which can reduce their accuracy. The range and sensitivity of the gas sensor can be significantly degraded due to air mixing effect of the propellers, making it difficult to detect low level of certain gases or to cover large area quickly. Interference from other gases or sources of pollution can also affect the accuracy of the readings making it harder to identify the specific gas of interest. Drone has to fly through the gas cloud to detect and quantify the gas, which may be undesirable in case of a major leak. Battery life and flight time, a common limiting factor for drones, which may require multiple flight or frequent recharging. This makes drones based sniffers good to monitor the overall level of emission of a plant or facilities, in example, up to level 5 of gold standard in OGMP 2.0, especially when the data is processed with the aid of AI or artificial intelligence. 
Now we look at optical gas imaging or OGI. It is actually using a specialized camera that can detect infrared radiation emitted by the gases. The camera able to detect and visualize gases because different gas absorb infrared radiation at different wavelength. Camera also can filter out other background radiation and only show the gas being targeted for detection. So how it work? When OGI drone flies over a gas pipeline or industrial site, the camera scan the area for any leak. The camera can then produce a visual image of the gas plume in real time, allowing operator to identify and locate the source of the leak. This allows for rapid identification and mitigation of gas leak, which can reduce the risk of explosion and other accidents. OGI drones can be operated remotely, allowing for safe inspection of hazardous or hard to reach area. So what are the advantages of using OGI drone for gas leak detection? First, it can detect fugitive emission from a relatively safe distance, reducing the risk of exposure to toxic gases and the likelihood of accident can quickly scan large area, allowing operator to identify leaks in real time. Visual re representation of gas cloud is easy to interpret, easy to spot, it here to unknown leaks, can reduce the need for manual inspection and can cover large area quickly, resulting in cost saving for gas leak detection. OGI drones can identify the exact location of gas leak, reducing the time and cost required for leak detection and repair. Can be operated remotely, allowing for safe inspection of hazardous or hard to reach area. And of course, OGI drone can help prevent environmental damage caused by gas leak by enabling early detection and swift action to mitigate the leak. Despite all the advantages, there is also some limitation to consider. The specialized camera and drone can be expensive to purchase and maintain, which may limit accessibility to some user. The camera used in OGI drones can detect many gases, not only the one of interest. Therefore, some gas detection may not necessarily be an actual gas leak. For example, it may just detect a water vapor or, or a steam. As for that, the operator must be properly trained to interpret the camera reading to correctly identify gas leak. Otherwise, the result may be unreliable. OGI drones may have limited performance time due to the short battery life or range of the drones, and the drones can only inspect what is in its field of view, making it unbefitting for monitoring long stretches of pipeline or wide areas. The level of gas emission or gas concentration cannot be measure, measured and quantified. It can only guess or estimated visually from the density of the cloud or plume in the image taken. Example here are the actual image taken from our recent deployment for a major refinery in Malaysia. These are on the left are the normal visual or RGB image taken from a camera. Then this is an infrared image of the same spot. The white hot shown it is an active line, but the gas leak can barely be seen. This is the same frame of the infrared image, but has been enhanced with gas enhancement mode or GEM mode, which close the gas emission. Sky Futures Malaysia had the opportunity to perform the drone-based gas leak detection in an actual operational environment at various locations within Southeast Asia. 
It took us six hours to complete the scanning and data capturing to quantify plume concentration in an onshore processing plant with an area of 16 acres. It only took us two hours to complete overall scanning and data capturing of an offshore platform. The drone was launched and recovered from a support vessel and not required to be on board the platform itself. We also performed a bond OGI to identify and detect the source of leak on a multiple pipeline over a pipe rack, stretching over 9 km of overall length with over 4,500 plus flanges to be inspected. That took us 16 days or 64 hours to complete all. Determining which option is better, sniffer or OGI, depend on specific needs and requirement of the application. If detecting gas leak in low concentration or in confined spaces or small area, sniffer technology may be a more cost-effective and sensitive option. Sniffer technology is also more portable and better suited for detecting certain type of gas. However, if you require a large coverage area, faster and more accurate detection or increased safety, OGI technology may be a better option. OGI can detect gas leak from a safe distance, reducing the risk of exposure to toxic gases and the likelihood of accident. It can also scan large area quickly and efficiently, providing greater coverage area. In general, can we say that the sniffer solution are better to monitor emission for a whole plant or facilities and thus covering a wide area, example for a GMP 2.0, Whereas the OGI most suitable for specific localized inspection, for example, for leak detection and repair or ELDA. In conclusion, both sniffer and OGI drone based gas leak detection have their advantages and disadvantages. However, OGI drone based is more accurate and efficient than sniffer drone based. It is also more reliable in area with high level of background radiation and can detect gases from a greater distance. For this reason, OGI drone-based gas detection is the way forward when it comes to monitoring hazardous gases in the environment as, for as far as the detection scope is concerned. However, both are actually complementing each other. Sniffer could identify and quantify the leakage, while OGI to pinpoint the sources. What I have shared with you in this presentation is just one example of the power and possibilities that drone offer us today. To help us ensure and manage the safety integrity and performance of petrochemical facilities. Yet I believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg. If we stand on top and look into the water, we can see more interesting development in the near future. However, the, more, the major changes that lay ahead of is somewhat further down the road. We can only imagine. So with that, I would like to end up my presentation. Uh, I really appreciate your time and patience to listen. If there is any question, you can ask through uh, the chat box. Thank you. Okay, thanks, uh, Nor Hasli, for your very insightful uh, session. Um, okay, I have a few questions from... Uh, fellow professional technologist. Um, a question from T.S. Ari Nazaruddin Abdul Rauf. Is the drone itself capability as an explosion proof type? Unless the camera has capability for mapping the gas leakage image from several distance from the hazardous zone area. Um, sorry for the question, um, and uh, Hasli, if uh, if you would like to answer the question uh, now, and just let us know. 
Uh, yep, I can answer that. I think this is a two different question. Uh, one is either the drone is actually explosion proof. Uh, and then I think the second question is uh, how, how far the, the, the camera capable uh, to getting the gas leak image. So for either drone is the uh, either the drone is uh, explosion approved uh, or explosion proof. Uh, I would say no, it's not yet uh, considered as explosion proof. See the reason being the modern drone design often use material that are less likely to generate static charge and they may also incorporate features such as grounding strap or other measures to dissipate any charge that accumulate. So additionally, the airflow generated by the spinning propeller can also help to disperse any charges that build up. But still, there is still possible for a static charge to build up on drone propeller during flight. Is coming from the propeller itself, and under certain condition, this charge could potentially create a spark. But likelihood of this happening is generally very low, and most drones are designed to minimize the risk of static discharge. Uh, based on our experience, uh, for us to mitigate this, we always operate outside zone 0 and zone 1. The closest that we go is under zone 2, but under hot work permit. Uh, for the second question, uh, the camera capability for OGI camera, uh, it can, for, for large type of uh, gas leak, it can detect from several hundred meters away. For the smallest leak, uh, for example, uh, 60 gram per hour, it can be detected within uh, within a meter away. So what we always practice before, uh, we, we fly from a standoff distance between 20 to 50 meters, uh, and then we scan the area to detect for any gas leak. So I hope I answer the question from. Yeah, OK. Um, I hope it answers your question, TSRE. And another question from TSG Matnawi. Um, is the OGI drone uh, designed uh, safely to fly in gas hazardous, hazardous area? And I think I can just go through um, a few of the questions, yeah, Hasli, so it's easier for you to, 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 to choose which one you can answer. Is that okay? Um, yes, sure. Okay, this is not a question. Yeah, this is, a, I think it's a feedback from Erman Hanif Elias, uh, because we are also on FB Live. Uh, it's good for reducing the risk during perform periodic inspection to the refinery or offshore plants, which is mandatory to do gas tests before entering the site. Uh, thanks for the input, um, Erman. And another question from Jubun Ong. How reliable and lifespan of OGI drone? And uh, we have, okay, we have uh, a few questions from T.S. Ahmad Badri. Uh, welcome, Salam, uh, T.S. Ahmad. Um, the first question would be, what are the cost implications of implementing drones-based gas detection systems in industrial settings and how do they compare it with traditional gas detection methods in terms of cost effectiveness? And the second question is, how can the telecommunication industry leverage drone-based gas detection systems for remote monitoring and management of gas leaks and emissions? similar to the remote usage observed in autonomous driving technology. Um, okay, there will be uh, another question from T.S. Mohamed Khairul Azizan. Uh, do you have any, does Sky Features have any experience in port? 
If yes, can uh, can you share a bit about any case studies that are relevant to port industry? Because based on what T.S. Cairo mentioned is, um, in his case, Johor Port is near to Singapore, but their own drone cannot fly. So he would need some advice for you from your side on this, uh, Mr. Hasli. Um, another question from um, T.S. Nor Hafiz. How do you look forward using drone in aircraft maintenance inspection? Uh, okay, so thanks for the questions, guys. I keep on giving in the questions uh, in the chat box. I mean, it is a very interactive session that we have. Um, the floor is yours now, Hasli. Yeah, Azian, on the last question uh, related with the aircraft maintenance, can you repeat that, please? Um, okay, the question from T.S. Nor Hafiz. How do you look forward using drone in aircraft maintenance inspection? Oh. I, I think it's more on how do how drones are being used in aircraft maintenance inspections. I think that's that's what he meant. Okay, all right. Uh, either the OGI drone is uh, IS or intrinsically safe. I, I think I already answered that. It's something similar like the explosion proof. Uh, the drone is not uh, intrinsically safe yet. Uh, and then the conventional uh, the comparison between uh, between conventional method and drone in terms of the cost, I can say that a conventional method for hard to reach area, uh, let's uh, on on a high high structure, you have to erect a scaffold uh, in order for for the inspector to reach the area and do a uh, gas test on that uh, in that location. So in terms of cost, we don't need to erect a uh, scaffold and also we saving in terms of time uh, because drone can be quickly uh, deployed to uh, scan on the uh, uh, hard to reach area. I also, um, we also got a question about port experience. Uh, yes, Sky Features have experience at port, but not for the uh, uh, gas leak detection or quantification is more on structural inspection we do inspection on the uh, overhead green uh, we do uh, photogrammetry uh, over the port area and we do some aerial imaging and lidar uh, scanning uh, on the uh, over the port area on singapore operation can you repeat that question again, Azian? Uh, sure. Um, for Singapore creation, I think that one is there one from um, oh from Kyril Azizat, TS Kyril Azizat. Um, I think you've answered the uh, question on any relevant case studies or experience in port. Because in his case, Johor Port is near to Singapore, but okay. His his drones cannot fly. I think he, they cannot cross over Johor to Singapore. So I think he wanted to get some advice. Uh, if we you have uh, if you have encountered this kind of situation before, I think it's more on the regulation, is it? Uh, I'm not sure. The the drone is not allowed to fly at all by the by the system itself or. Uh, they are not getting permission from the authority. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. T.S. Cairo, if you probably can um, uh, give us some more details on um, your questions, um, hopefully Hasli can uh, answer your questions as well. Uh, and from T.S. Nor Hafiz, um, on how do you use drones in aircraft maintenance inspection? Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, for drones, there are 
we can use drone for visual inspection. So in term of uh, aircraft maintenance inspection, what we can utilize drone is to check uh, the post painting activities. Mm. So uh, instead of uh, we using, uh, you, you, you have to erect some uh, scaffold beside the uh, aircraft, you can straight away deploy a drone to have mm. a visual uh, image of the the skin surface after you apply a new pin so either it is within your standard or if there is some uh, debris or if it is not as good as what you are expecting mm. that is some application of uh, drones within aircraft maintenance activity uh, activities and also now we have a drone with uh, uh, UT capability, uh, ultrasonic mm. thickness gauge capabilities, which also we can deploy uh, to check uh, to get a measurement of skin thickness on aircraft, especially on the vertical tail, uh, vertical tail plane. Mm. Yep. Okay. Um, I hope that answers your question, T. S. Norhafiz. Uh, another one from Erman Hanif Elias uh, from our FB Live. Is that okay? Is okay. The drone itself does it has any certification to be used in hazardous areas? Yeah. Um, if if they referring to either it is explosion proof and also either is IS, I think I already answered that. Hmm. Uh, again, it, it is not. So it has to work. Uh, it has to be outside of zone zero on zone one, and it also has to be operating under a, a hot wood permit. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. This is an interesting question. Uh, you know, everyone is talking about cyber cyber security now. Um, mm. it's from An T S Anizan bin Ali from FB Live. Can the drone be hacked? <laughs> Uh, hack in term of what? Uh, is it uh, technically yes? If you have a jammer systems, uh, you can jam the frequency. Uh, but in term of you hack and you take over the control, uh, you, you need to have a very high end system or uh, hardware in order to do that. Uh, I think for 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 normal people like us uh, uh, except for the military for, for, for commercially the only things that you can do is you jam the frequency but if you done that the drone have its own uh, uh, safety measures where when it's uh, lost link or frequency have been interrupted it will enter into a return to home uh, function where it will land itself to the point where it's uh, start taking off. Uh, so even though you interrupt the frequency, you jam the frequency, it's still safe. The drone will not go away away from you. It will be forced to land uh, near you. I would say. Uh, okay. I hope that answers your question. Um. Uh, T S Anizan. Um, okay, um, this is interesting. We are getting more questions, guys. Um, from T.S. Christopher K. Uh, once investigation is done and the problem is identified, in your experience, Hasli, um, has any remedial or mitigation measures executed by drones too? Um, I'm not really clear, but, but um, yeah, is that clear uh, for you on the questions, Hasli? No. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Mr. T.S. Christopher, I uh, would be appreciated if you can probably um, give uh, more details on the question so that Mr. Hasley um, are able to answer any of your um, questions. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's back to uh, T.S. Carol Azizat just now who's asking about the Singapore, uh, mm -hmm. I think the boundaries. Yes. Um, our His drone cannot fly at all. He assumed that 
is because of yeah the approval due to boundary limitation. Uh, so I think that's more on the uh, regulation related. Yeah. 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 Okay. Another question from. Um, pardon me if I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna actually um, pronounce your your name uh, wrongly, but uh, it's a very interesting name. I'm Shui Li Malva Sent. Okay. Uh, based on um, um, his or her, her experience, the current UAV is still under explosion proof because of battery operator and needed to be inspected. But that is depending on the zone. Um, whether it's cold work or hot work. Oh yeah, thanks for your input. Yeah, he's um that is one of uh, uh insightful that we can share with everyone here. Another question from T S John. Um, on the OGI drone, yeah, Hasli. Uh, does it provide real time data monitoring? And if so, what is the size of the data captured by the drones? OGI uh, for OGI camera is actually the the data that we got is actually a video. So uh, in term of size, it depends how long the the video you you capture is uh, yeah. is in a gigabyte uh, size. I would say. Uh, at the moment, there is some limitation in term of OGI. It can only get images. It cannot do any quantification yet uh, in terms of you want to know how much the lead concentration is. So that's why it has to come hand in hand with quantification uh, yet. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of you want to know how much the lead concentration is. Mm -hmm. So that's why it has to come hand in hand with uh, education, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of you want to know how much the lead concentration is. Mm -hmm. So that's why it has to come hand in hand with uh, education, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of um, you want to know that's how much weird. the lead yeah. concentration <laughs> is. Sorry. Um, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, so I think we are having some technical issues, but how do I? With, uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh, are, are you, are you listening to, to the, the reactive uh, yes. um, answer? Yes. Because, Sorry, uh, uh, okay, I, I think, think yeah. we need, yeah, so I think we are having some technical issues, but how do I? With, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, um, I hopefully the host um, have fixed it. OK, um, let's get back to the questions. Uh, we don't want to stop the, uh, the, the vibe here right now. Um, from, OK, this is from FB Live uh, from TS Charil. Uh, what will be the best preparation uh, to become a certified drone operator? Uh, is there any education minimum requirements to become a certified drone operator, Hasli? Uh, as a drone operator, uh, minimum requirement is uh, SPM. Uh, it is because it's required by the CAAM in order, in order for you to obtain your uh, RCOCB certification. RCOCB stands for Remote Pilot Certificate of Comp Competency. Uh, B stands for Basics. So the reason being they require SPM is they need English to uh, I think pass uh, mm. because the the the, uh, the 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 course will be fully in English uh, and the test also will be in English, so that's mm. the minimum requirement. Okay, um, okay, all the best to you, Sharil. I hope that uh, it motivates you to become a certified drone operator. <laughs> okay, another question from FB Live. Um, okay, um, this is some thoughts from Shizu. Uh, what he knows is if you entered the hazardous area, especially the offshore platform, all equipments must be X, uh, EX certified. And drones also have a certified equipment. Okay, does drones also have um, certified equipments or device 
which is on the X certified certification. And does it has to be comply with IECX standard? OK, uh, our experience operating offshore, we always uh, not to say always. Uh, we be, before we perform the job, we will do some job hazard analysis with the offshore team. Uh, we will uh, register that our drone is not EX certified, uh, and then we will explain to them how uh, the flight plan would be. Uh, so basically, when we operating uh, offshore, we are not flying over the platform or within the platform area. We always fly over the sea, stand off distance from the platform. Even the launch and recovery of the drone also, uh, most of the time we do it either from the helipad or we we do it from the 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 uh, the, the boat uh, to mitigate the risk. Mm. So that's how we work uh, with the offshore team when we operating over there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Another question from TS Chimat. Uh, what is the specification of OGI drone if you have to fly in H2S area? Um, the same specification, uh, the same standard specification. Uh, the only difference I think would be the uh, the operator. The, the remote pilot and also the inspector, they have to stand off from a safe distance. They cannot enter the HTS area, of course. Uh, but the drone itself, uh, it can fly in, but of course, within the limitation of uh, Zone 2 with hot work permit. Uh, and then from uh, because of OGI operation, uh, the camera can detect uh, the gas leak from a significant distance, from 100 meters away, if it is a significant uh, gas leak. So, not necessarily the drone to fly into the uh, H2S area in order to identify where the leak is. It can stand off outside the parameter and still get the uh, to pin uh, they still can pinpoint where the source is. Mm. Okay. Um, another question from uh, Laza Manan. Um, what are the effects HR HIRF on drones? HIRF uh, stands for high intensity radio frequency. Yeah, so that will be question from like high Zamanan. frequency, high density radio frequency. Hmm. Mm, interesting question. I also not sure in terms of uh, that. Uh, that okay, is, I but, but but I can share yeah. some experience uh, because we Sky Futures we also do some telco inspection. We do uh, inspection on the telecommunication tower, uh, the, the, the tower itself, which uh, during the inspection is live, they are transmitting, uh, but we did not experience any interference when while we do our job. Uh, and then the drones that we use is uh, an industrial grade drones. It's not the, uh, the, the the small hobbies or the uh, domestic grade drones. Uh, it is specific uh, specifically for uh, industry application. Okay. Um, kena hack. Oh, kita kena hack ke tadi masa ada dengar bunyi repetitive. <laughs> Question and answers. Okay, I hope that uh, they don't hack our data. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, another question from uh, Mr. John. Does the analytics on the data such as gas leakage detection uh, must be done after getting the video um, or it can be done real time? Sorry, come again. 
Okay, um, the question from Mr. John is, I think it's, okay, the, okay, it's it's on the analytic sides of it, the data analytic sides of it. Um, when, okay, can the gas leakage detection uh, analytic site can be done after getting the video or it can be done when the drones are conducting the inspection in real time? Okay, uh, two different thing, uh, two different sensor that we're talking about. For OGI, yes, you can see it in real time uh, because when you detect a, a leak, you detect a leak. You can see the leak where the source is. Uh, for another an, an, another sensor, which is the sniffer, uh, it does give you the real time data where the uh, uh, the where the uh, leak area is, how much the concentration is, you can roughly see uh, the area uh, plotted in real time. But for detailed analysis on how much the concentration is, uh, it will be done uh, post flight. So you still get a general uh, uh, information. Uh, on where the concentrated area is, where the source, which is uh, mostly maximum, but to get the details information and uh, details data, uh, post flight will do that. Okay, I hope that answers your question, John. Um, okay, another question from uh, Lakza Manan about uh, on HIRF just now, how are the drones being protected from HIRF effects? Um, uh, uh, I think, no, I, I couldn't answer that, I'm sorry. Uh, it will, uh, it is still susceptible uh, if the the intensity is very, very high as you experience. Uh, the drone can be affected, uh, but as I explained before, uh, the drone has its own safety measure, whereby when it detects a lost link, lost communication link or RF interference, it will uh, enter into a return to home mode where it will fly itself, avoid any obstacle and land back to the point where it is start initialized or the, uh, we call it the home point. So the safety measure is that lah, whenever it has detected RF interference, it will enter return to home mode and let it set to the home point. Okay. I hope you are clear on that, Lakzamanan. Um, okay, another one from our FB live uh, from Devon Drone, Joe William. Uh, adakah drone boleh digunakan dalam kerja kejuruteraan dan construction? Yep, yang ini memang banyak. It's been used widely. Uh, in fact, they use they are among the first uh, among a few pioneers industry that utilizing drones way before in 2012-2013. So drone being used in engineering and construction site uh, in terms of progress monitoring because of uh, the drones capable to take videos. So you can see your progress from uh, one month to another. Uh, and then the drones are capable to get uh, image from the same point uh, repeated, uh, at a repeated time. So you can save the flight plan for any point of time. Uh, so the drone can fly autonomously to take the video at the same pattern of flight each and every time. So that's how you can get a very good uh, progress monitor, uh, monitoring report. 
Uh, and then secondly, the drone can be used to take aerial imaging or aerial mapping of your construction area. Uh, you even can do uh, 3D mapping of the construction site uh, based on the image taken from the from the drone. So the answer is yes, drone are widely used in construction and engineering work. Okay, uh, a question from Nelson. Is there any limitation on OGI drones? Uh, yes, of course, uh, as I explained in the slides, a uh, few limitations. Uh, OGI drones can only detect where the source of gas leak is, uh, but it cannot quantify how much the concentration is. Uh, and then it's also limited to the drone uh, specification or the drone capability itself uh, in terms of the flight time, the battery endurance, and how far the drone can go. Okay. Um, okay, another question um, from Muhammad Khair Sharuddin. Uh, if you have any simulation videos that you can share with us uh, uh, during the session. Um, either on uh, either the data can be obtained real time or it can be executed after downloading the video. Mm, okay, I think the first question would be if we have any videos that we you know yet that you can share. Uh, on any inspections that you have done, that's number one. And the second question, um, as what I understand is, um, does the data uh, works real time or it can be executed after downloading the video? Um, uh, Muhammad, I don't really understand the second question. If you can uh, probably um, explain further so that Hazli can answer as well. Yeah, while doing that, uh, give me a minute if I can retrieve some image on uh, his request. Sure. Um, and we are hoping to get more questions uh, from all the technologies as well. Um, but let's say if you have any further questions after the sessions, um, you can actually drop um, uh, Chet Hasli, um, uh, an email. Um, we'll share with you his email shortly. Or if you want to know more about um, Kenyala, you can as well reach out to me. I'll share with you my email. Or you can even follow um, Sky Features on LinkedIn to get more updates or understand more on what uh, their capabilities are, not only in oil and gas, but other energy industries. Mr. Hasli, I think you are still muted. Oh yeah, um, uh, Hasli, I think you are you are on mute. Yep, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay, on the bottom right here, this is the image, uh, real-time image while drone is flying. So when it make the measurement quantification, it will plot in real time uh, some data. Uh, so you can uh, have a general idea, uh, general idea where the 
if there is any gas concentration or at a certain location uh, so that you can uh, concentrate on that area on this uh, on the next uh, flight path so for for detailed analysis of course he will have to do it post flight uh, but for for the for immediate information you can visually see where the gas concentration is uh, by uh, the, the the color it gives while it scanning uh, around the plant area. So this is some example that you uh, as requested. Either the drone can give real time data information uh, while flying. Okay. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um. Muhammad Khair. I think uh, Khair did actually okay. He 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 gave us more details on the questions that he asked just now. Besides the video, uh, Hasli, uh, how the re how the data reading can be obtained? Is it real time execution? Oh okay. Yeah yeah. I think you answered the question. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm a bit delayed, guys. Um, this, okay, the next question would be from um, Azru, okay, Shizu, uh, from FB Life. Um, the drone itself has been certified uh, by Petronas. If using this method for visualization, close or detailed inspection at live plant or live offshore platform, uh yes uh, in fact we already do quite a numbers of job with petronas both onshore and offshore okay um the next question from john um what is the minimum distance between the gas and ogi drone for the gas le leakage to be detected uh, okay, it goes back to the OGI specifications. Uh, if the small leakage, for example, between 60 gram per hour, it need to be as close as about uh, uh, meters away in order for it to pick up the leak. But if it is a significant leak, even from 100 meters away or 100 meters away, uh it still can pick up it still can uh, see the where the leak source is uh, especially when it enhanced with the uh, gas enhancement mode the gm mode which will uh, glow uh, from from the screen where the gas leak uh, is okay uh, i hope that answers your question john Mm, let me double check on the chat box if I've missed out any of the questions. Um, okay, I I think uh, you have answered all the questions. Um, do we still have time, uh, Bell, for for more questions or? Okay, I I'm think I think. Ah, oh, okay, um, but. I think, yeah, I think uh, Hasli has, has, has answered all the questions. Um, uh, but if you guys have any other questions after this, uh, just drop us an email or you can uh, drop his SS, the host, uh, email. Um, we will uh, try to reply to any of uh, the questions. Uh, so, Bell, I think um, now would be... Uh, okay, we have done the QA session. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Hasli, for a very insightful session, and thank you for uh, uh, for the audiences or the uh, our professional technologists for uh, all the questions, and you make it a very inter interactive sessions for everyone. And now we will go to the certificate giving sessions, uh, and uh, on behalf uh, of, of the host Hasli, uh, I would like to thank you for your time and um, your, your uh, effort to share this knowledge 
with everyone. And I hope uh, this will be a very beneficial um, session for everyone. And um, we look forward to have you more in, 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 in our future sessions as well. So the floor is yours, Bell. Okay, thank you very much, ASEAN. So Mr. Hasli, uh, on behalf of PCSS Consultancy, we would like to thank you very much for the uh, insightful webinar session that you have shared on drones, uh, on, on drone-based gas detection, uh, what is the way forward, sniffer or optical gas imagery. So uh, with that, I would like to hand over this certificate of appreciation to you. As a, on behalf of PCSS, as a thank you. So <laughs> I will email you this uh, the uh, at the end of the webinar later. So thank you very much, Mr. Hazi. Yeah, All right, everybody. thanks to you too. Thank you. Okay, so from here we can probably uh, move on to our photo taking session. So I would like everyone to probably open their camera. Is that okay? For taking session. Okay, if everyone is ready. Okay. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Okay, uh, last one. One, two, three. All right. Okay, um, I think that will be, is that the end of the session? Yeah, Bill? Um, uh, yes. Okay, um, thank you everyone for attending the session today. I know it's Friday, TGGIF to everyone. Um, I would like to also wish everyone Selamat Berpuasa, Selamat Hari Raya, Selamat Bercuti uh, to all my um, new friends. Um, I hope to see you guys, but again, if you want, you have any questions, if you want to know more about Sky Features, do reach out to us or you can reach out to the host. Um, yeah, and um, hope to see you guys uh, in many, many more sessions. Thank you, everyone. Bye.